Welcome to the Art of Physics. We have another sterling set of guests. Oh my gosh, these people are amazing. Now, you know, a lot of people exercise in various ways. Uh, for years, people walked and walked and walked. But, you know, the modern idea is speed. You've got to have speed. So we have somebody you can see on the uh, clip there that is walking. That's speed walking, sort of. And there's wheels. And so that's kind of fun. You know, you can walk nicely with that. But on the other hand, there is a little bit of a problem. And what is that problem? It's hills. Oh my gosh, how do you get up those hills? Well, and how do you get down those hills for that matter? Both are kind of a problem. And so what people decided to do was eventually to get to the point of turning the wheels. And so how do you turn the wheels? Well, there's all kinds of ways to turn the wheels. One of the ways involves this sort of a thing. Can you turn this wheel? Well, this is kind of an odd one because you can turn the heck out of this darn thing. And so sure enough, but how am I turning this? Well, I'm turning it with a kind of a motion like this, and it's, it's hard to turn, isn't it? So maybe there are easier ways to turn wheels that involve physics. Possible? Yeah, let's see how that might work. These ladies I'd like to introduce you to know a lot about turning wheels because they are big wheels in their own right. And <laughs> so, Marsha Mumru, Hi, a big wheel. <laughs> I like to think so. Beth Brandvane, <laughs> a big wheel in her own right as well. And everybody acknowledges that. There's just no question about that at all. <laughs> and the physics part of the big wheel turning is this. You know, there's something in physics that's called torque. And so if you'd like to learn about torque, then here's the way to begin. Who can see gonna, this? Are we going to get torqued on TV? Yeah, you are. Oh, cool. Yeah, is that good? So this is a wrench. And if you were taking something apart with this wrench, would you be holding a wrench about here to take it apart? Or would you hold the wrench back here someplace to take it apart? Uh -huh. there. There's a question. Here's another one for you. And this is one which involves bicycle stuff. You know, this is a mirror. And let's see, can you see that one? OK, Greg can see that. There's this mirror. And so if you'd like to tighten up this mirror, there are a couple ways to tighten it because here's this great bicycle wrench called an Allen wrench. So if you were tightening this mirror, Marcia, how would you tighten it? Just like this one. I would first attach it to my bicycle. Yeah, you probably would. See? But you would turn it like this. Uh-huh, you would, wouldn't you? Right. Now, could you also turn it another way? Let me make a suggestion well, you could this way. This could you turn it this way? Try that. What would that be? Well, that's less efficient, I think, because ah. <laughs> it's easier to grab the longer part of the handle. What do you think, Beth? I think I agree with my co-dictator. It's so nice to have agreement. I mean, my gosh, how can you beat that? It's terrific. Indeed, you're right. And there is physics involved, and the physics involved is something called torque. Torque, T-O-R-Q-U-E, torque. And what torque does is this. If you want to turn this, then you can turn it by just holding on here and turning it like so. But if you use a longer lever arm, then you have more torque, it's easier to turn. So everybody takes advantage of that every day in many, many ways. You walk up to a door, and where do you push on the door to open it? Do you push over where the hinges are, or do you push the other side? No, it's torque. It's torque the whole way. Bicycles took advantage of torque very nicely and in a big way. Now, who can see this one? Greg, can you see this? Okay. that is, of course, something that goes along with bicycles. That's a sprocket. And you notice the sprocket has all these teeth on it, but there is a smaller sprocket and a bigger sprocket and a bigger. Which one do you think would be easier to turn if you had a chain attached to this that was doing the turning? Well, it would be easier if you turned this sprocket that's that the one. biggest one, right? So sure enough, that's the lower gears. The lower gears are easier to turn. Now, of course, the difficulty is this. Although it's easier to turn, you have to turn it a lot further in order to get the same distance. So the result of that is that if you're in a very low gear, you have to make a lot of revs. And if you're in a higher gear, you don't have to make so many revs. So it all depends on the speed. So you match the speed. These gals know this inside and out because they're experienced bicyclists. They change the gears automatically. It's very simple for them. So the beauty of all this is that we know physics. 
but we know bicycling both. And so the net result is that we can go a lot of places way faster than those people at the beginning where they just had those walking cycles. So in any event, let's start by talking to these nice ladies because they know bicycles so well. I'm going to start with Marsha because Marsha, I've known Marsha for more than 40 years. Yeah, we don't like to talk about <laughs> <that>. <laughs> Not in polite society, but it's been a long time. It's been a very long uh, time. Very long time. <laughs> right. Um, and of course, we started uh, 40 years ago. Let's see, um, where was that that we it started? It was at Camp Michigania. Do you think we have a graphic for that, Camp Michigania? There, that's uh, the big rock that is now painted maize and blue. And there are some other people there. Of course, Camp Michigania has been home to an awful lot of people for an awful lot of years. But that's where we started many years ago. Probably was 40 or so. And we weren't biking. We were and we tennis. weren't biking. At that point, we were tennis players. Did you bike at all then, or was it just occasional? Um, my husband and I biked. We had just bikes, you know, regular bikes, no speeds really. Yeah, with, cruisers. With seats on the back for, for our the kids. kids. Yeah. And they nobody wore helmets, and we used to just buckle them in with a, you know, a like strap. a belt or a strap. Yeah. Yeah. And we'd ride around the neighborhood. That was a lot. That was most of our biking. Then. Sure. But we had bikes. Did a kid ever stick their uh, foot into the spokes? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Not then. <laughs> Good. That's very fortunate. So, right. Wow. Well, um, now I've known Marsha for longer than I've known Beth. So of course I like to Google people to find out just exactly who people are. So Beth, I use Google You, and ah. let's see if what we'll Google You, let's see what it turned up for you. So do we have another one showing what Google's result of all that is? Google You shows Beth as, oh my gosh, what a gorgeous lady! It says Team Alex on that jersey, and it says Team Alex on the shirt she's wearing today. So you would think that she's probably a Team Alex person. Well, indeed she is. She's the captain of Team Alex, and it has to do with Make-A-Wish. We're going to talk more about that later. In fact, we're going to talk about it at some uh, longer extent. But in the meantime, oh, I guess I did, did I Google you? I think I did. Is there a Google you for Marsha as well? Uh, we'll Google you for Marsha, and Marsha shows up with it says, welcome to Team Alex. And so there indeed, Marsha is in the wish a mile. And so she too is in the Team Alex. So my gosh, there's like a lot. I'd like to point out, there's a little button that says donate now. Donate yep, now. Right, and you can donate to Marsha right now. <laughs> can somebody go push on their TV and donate? <laughs> that would <laughs> they be may great. try. Oh, uh, geez, that would be good. Well, but the way I know these two ladies, well, first of all, I guess I better ask this. Since I knew you first and I didn't know Beth, how right. did you know Beth? From tennis. Tennis. So Just tennis. like I knew you, only a little differently. Beth and I met playing tennis. We were in the same league ah. at that the Thursday League. Really? Which was then run by a lady named Miriam Shaw. Oh, sure. Correct? I know Miriam Shaw. Correct. And we became very fast friends. And so and then the ladies that we played tennis with in the summer, you correct me if I'm wrong. So but they even. all played golf, right? They all played golf in the summer. Beth and I looked at each other and said, we don't <laughs> want to play golf. What else can we golf. do instead? <laughs> but, and we started biking but then. But Marcia had come to tennis along with your mutual friend, Judy Byrne. Yes. Wearing a t-shirt that said Michigander. Oh, right. That was, was our first big ride. I had known ride. about. I was just starting to get interested in cycling. And so I thought, oh, Marcia, Michigander, did you do that? And um, yeah, that was she it. said she had done the last day. Uh, with Judy and her son Brad, Marcia's son Brad. And so that was kind of how this, well, let's <laughs> not play golf. And we started to bike together. We even went mountain biking at Mayberry State Park, a near-death experience, which we survived. <laughs> um, and we started that with some of the other tennis ladies, but it was just the two of us really? in the end. Right. And then I had an interest in taking a certain trip to Nova Scotia. And mm. I had already taken a couple we went on trips so that was how we got reacquainted yes, do you remember that's right because for a while we sort of lost track of each other for years yeah it was a long years. time and then i my husband and i got more i guess had biked a little bit more and decided mm -hmm. to take a bike trip and our first very first bike trip that we went on the lady picked us up at the train station we were in banff correct no oregon no we were in oregon oregon yeah so she said, oh, there's somebody else from Bloomfield. Um, Art Wiggins, do you know him? And I went, 
Art Wiggins, really. I heard the voice, and I said, oh, it is Art. That's so my tennis friend from no. Michigan. In fact, that, there's a, that something oh, I will show you. Because it was Backroads that did it. Do you remember, Marcia, that there was one person who went over and ta taped Hills, where it said Backroads, and they made it say Back Hills. Do you remember that? I do, vaguely. You I did do. it, didn't you? What? No. Didn't you tape that? Did I? Yeah, did you did do I? that? No. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> so many people suspected her. Because oh, well. back roads, we thought they were going to be nice country roads, rolling oh, and so Oregon forth. Oregon was so Some hilly. of those were very hilly. Oh, my God. You needed to use your gears on the coast. We used our gears. Yeah, boy, one, we one. Ever. Show them which one, Art. Yeah, one, <laughs> one. Oh, boy. <laughs> one. There's the one for you. That's the outermost gear. And sure enough, everybody uses outermost gears on those big hills. So that's what we were doing. Right. And having a good time doing it. So that's so, how we reconnected. Yeah, we reconnected. And then when... Um, and then I came back and Beth, I would relate to Beth about our bike trips. And she said, we can do that by ourselves. And right. it would be Who way cheaper roads? and we don't need back roads. Who needs Vermont bicycle tours? Who needs any of those people, right? And thus, Marsha and I became the co-dictators of Outspoken. Outspoken. And so, let's see, do we have an Outspoken <laughs> logo to show? Because you can see what Outspoken looks like on the logo. Oh, you can see. You can see it there, but there's the logo that shows oh, Outspoken. Right. Mm -hmm. And oh boy, we were outspoken and probably still are. So, <laughs> they in those days they planned trips for a varying number, but numbers are around 16 plus or minus. We a few. started out with 12 and ended up with 18 of us. Yeah. At, at our high point. And so they, if you can imagine, planned trips for anywhere from 12 to 18 people. Now, if you can imagine that, what's that like? Do you suppose trying to find? A trip that would work for 12 to 18 people in varying locales. I mean, I guess Canada. it would. I would say it really depends on the people. Yeah, doesn't it though? <laughs> and that's why we have another graphic, Beth, because looking at this next graphic, I heard somebody say at one point that outspoken was like herding cats. So do you see <laughs> trying to herd cats? I think there's maybe some of that. But the beauty of it was that they did such a fabulous job because it was a great tour, it was a great trip, it was a great bunch of people. And I think we have a slideshow that shows a few of them. I'll let you look at the slides and you can comment on the slides as you see them um, and tell who it is. That was a group, oh gosh, was that 2002? I think that might have been a trip to the eastern townships of Quebec or someplace in Canada. Could be. Yeah, I think that might have been Gananaque. Was Which it? I just drove through yesterday. Did you? By the oh, way, cute. On the way home from Quebec. Cute. I'm not, yeah, yeah, that, that was, was our trip. first. That was the trip that everybody got lost in. And now there's a variety of bicycles, not just a variety of people. There's a variety right. of bicycles. Look at that. That's a tandem. So an upright tandem. A and recumbent tandem. There's a recumbent. Another. That's a recumbent tandem. Recumbent tandem, right? Right. And there's probably even more. Would you like to talk about the physics of recumbent tandems and tandems, or is that for another I'd, show? Oh, wait a minute. Look at that one. Now, who do you think that is, Marcia? Is that Avi? I can't see That's it. That's Avi and Beth. That's, That's Avi and Beth in South Dakota. Oh, right. my oh no, gosh. in uh, Oregon. That's that in would Oregon. Be Mount Hood is it Mount Hood in the background? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. We I had thought it was somebody from the Chamber of Commerce myself. It looked so good. My golly. So that was, um, now we have three tandems in a row, and occupying the lowest of the low, there's Barbara and Art. And so we're <laughs> tandeming right with the rest of them. We have three wheels, so there's even more physics. Well, I just want to say that do, I think do mostly to the physics of the tandem that my husband and I rode and that the other two couples rode. Uh, we're all on our own bikes now. <laughs> <laughs> So there's That's physics a, in action. There's a variety of bicycles. <laughs> now, there's another bunch, and this bunch is in Croatia, I think, looking at the dots on there. Mm -hmm. And those are all rental bicycles, so they're all um, ones which are so upright. You, so does the grade coming out, because we were on a, on a ship for this, and then we, had, we rode every day, and when we came out, there was a 10% grade out of every <laughs> town that we were in, we had to ride at least like a mile up one of those hills. Right. So what's the physics of that? Well, I think that has to do with the fact that those islands are actually mountains, because when you think about the sea, what is it that sticks up out of the sea? And the answer is mountains, things that have high peaks to them. So you're going to have to go up those edges in order to get to wherever the plateau is on top, if there even is one. Now you see even more than that, there's an electric bike, a couple electric bikes They there. defy physics. 
they defy physics because we needed help. <laughs> we needed more help than just pedals. Speak for so yourself. I am. <laughs> and if you look carefully, you see Barbara, me, and Marsha. But Marsha is not on an electric bike. Marsha's on a regular bike. That just shows she's willing to tough it out regardless. So there we were. Where was that anyway? That must have been also in Croatia. That was Croatia. Croatia. One, yeah, because yeah, those are our Croatia shirts. Right. One Croatia of my favorites. On. Those were fun. What a great time. So let's see what else we have. Um, we <laughs> even went to places where we shouldn't have gone. Um, we went to uh, have a picnic on top of a mountain once. And we, so we said to the park ranger, uh, we found it at the top of the mountain. So where are the picnic tables? The park ranger says, well, there. He says, it's over there on that other mountain. So I'd like to embellish on that. We, OK. That was our first trip. And um, as happens on every trip, uh, well, there's two co-dictators. And this was actually my division. That would be routing. <laughs> uh, and I heard we had read that there was this incredible hike at the top of this place and so all day we're riding and we're asking people how do you get to this place how do you get to this place and they're like are you sure you want to go there are you sure on bicycles are you sure you want to go there there's so many other places to hike are you sure you want to go yeah we definitely want to go there and then when we got there uh, we were facing the ranger and that's when he said oh, we asked for where the hike was the trailhead and he said well you go down there and across <laughs> and up. And then Art named that mountain that we went up Mount Unnecessary. It may have been unnecessary, but it was a lot of fun. And it became the first of many Mount Unnecessary. <laughs> 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 and we had a great picnic and a wonderful hike there. Right. Boy, we sure did. Wow. Right. Well, that's kind of ancient history in a way. So let me talk to these ladies about more modern, up-to-date history. And that has to do with Make-A-Wish because I know that they're very heavily involved in Make-A-Wish. They're training for it right now. I have to apologize to them because I'm taking them away from their training, and I feel badly about doing it, but they so nicely volunteered to be on the program. I just twisted a few arms, and sure enough, there they are. But tell us about Make-A-Wish, and tell us what that's all about. Well, I'm going to let Beth tell you that. All right. Well, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, that's a national organization, but Make-A-Wish of Michigan has a large fundraising bike ride every year. Um, it's a three-day ride, 100 miles a day. And I'm happy and proud to say that I am the founder of a group called Team Alex. This will be our 16th year of riding in the Make-A-Wish ride. We started with 14 riders in 1999. Uh, to date, right now, I think we have about 140 signed up to ride on our team and participate <laughs> with uh, the larger group, which is the Make-A-Wish uh, group. We'll be taking buses a week from Thursday up to Traverse City and then riding home 100 miles a day for three days. Wow. And we're happy to do it, and we're thrilled to be able to have the opportunity to raise money to grant wishes to children with life-threatening medical conditions uh, to bring a little sunshine into their life. And we're inspired by a young lady named Alex Graham. And uh, she, in 1999, had the opportunity to make to have a wish granted, and she did a public service announcement, which most of you have probably seen. Um, where she is with some other young people and asking uh, for a little compassion. And her message was, if you see us or someone else who looks a little different, don't stare, just smile. So we're trying to spread a little smiling and a little happiness. And we're lucky to be able to do it on our bicycles. Wow. Right. Is that ever lucky, to be able to combine a couple interests and uh, help people in the meantime? Fabulous. What a nice thing. Another interesting thing that's happened is... Uh, We've picked up a lot of people along the way, but one of the, and I'm happy about all of them, but I'm ecstatic that Marsha is going to be joining us this year for the 300 mile ride. I think that was maybe a big le leap for her to decide, but apparently she's the only one of the whole 140 who's trained and ready, so. I'm not quite, <laughs> not really. <laughs> right, I've done, there's a one day ride that some people do that's a 50 mile ride at the end, and then we join the 300 milers and all ride in together at, at the very end at the, is it the Michigan um, Michigan International Speedway. Speedway? Yeah, Michigan International Speedway in Brooklyn, Michigan. That's where it ends. And um, I told Beth, I said, well, I've done that a few times. I kind of feel guilty because I've only ridden 50 miles. And, you know, that doesn't seem like very much. You guys have done so much, and everybody's applauding and cheering. And I said, I think I could do more. So I don't know if I can really do more, <laughs> but I'm going to attempt it. Um, in a couple of weeks. 
So and I even though we training. look the same age, Marsha's a little a couple years older than me, so it's a bigger <laughs> challenge for her. <laughs> Quite a challenge. Yeah, but so, after knowing Marsha for 40 plus years, I know that Marsha is equal to many challenges. If not greater. If not greater. Well, <laughs> we'll find out. Depends a lot on many things right. because there are a lot of factors that affect how you ride, including weather and hills, as you know. Hills? Oh hills. my gosh. Hills, yeah, yeah, right. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. But I'm, I'm kind of excited to do this. But as this. long as you got one one, you'll be fine. Right. Jeez. So Can I we'll ask see. a physics question now? Ask a physics question. Okay. I wish you would. So we're talking a lot about one one. And this is only one of two sprockets. Yes. That are on the bicycle. Yes. The second one is going to be up here. Yep. And it's going to have a selection of two or three right. uh, cogs. And they're going to be much larger than these. Yep. And the, invert, the principle here that you've described to us is true in opposite. Mm -hmm. On the other so, side, right? So it's not true on the front nope. that I need the bigger piece to make it easier. No, part of the problem, and that's fine, what a great question. Beth knows, she really knows how to get to the heart of the problem. The other problem that you've got is you have a chain which is of constant length. So you've got to worry about that length of chain. That is, you've got to be able to have that length be the same. So when one's big, the other's got to be small in order to make this finally work out. So, but you want to have the one which is turning the wheel be large because it gives you the most moment arm. So the one in the back that's directly connected to the wheel is the one that really counts. That's and the, the other one is just taking up slack. Yep. It's one which actually is working in such a way to keep the chain at a constant length. There's a thing called a derailleur, too, and you may notice there's an extra little idler wheel and an arm and stuff. There's all kinds of interesting stuff about the physics of bicycles. And so in order to make all that work, those things all work together. It's a complicated little mechanism. But when you think about bicycle mechanics and you think about how they do their work, think about who it was that made the first airplane. Who were those guys? Yeah, bicycle. The Wright brothers. Right. They were the bicycle mechanics. So it was bicycle mechanics that eventually made airplanes. So you know that those guys, they look like they just turn wrenches. Oh no, they do an awful lot more than that. They're very clever people. So sure enough, great question. Um, uh, the other question I had for you gals was, I wanted to hear what was on tap for the future for you gals. Because I know that you, you're never static. You always are looking ahead. And so what is it that's coming up that you're seeing in the future of bicycling or whatever else? What do you see ahead? I, I don't know. There's al there are always things I haven't planned. Like a lot of times we do do bike trips. Um, I've, we did a short one up north this year with, you know, I did it with other friends. And um, I haven't planned anything really that much. There are other projects that I have, but it doesn't really have to do with bicycling. Okay. okay. Right. How about you? You and I talked about something not long ago. That what are we talking about? I'm trying to remember. It had to do with a staycation, I think was what you called it, and I didn't understand what that was referring oh, to exactly. Yeah, but that's it, not happening. Not happening. I, I thought it would be fun to put together a little touring company right out of that, right here, where maybe, you could, like going to camp, you could sign up yeah. and I would... Uh, Put some stuff together for five days, five different rides in the area, low traffic, uh -huh. nice lunch spots and stuff. But I got a little sidetracked this summer. Uh, sidetracked. A little sidetracked. So uh, I'm back on course now. And uh, right now what I'm thinking about is I'm signed up for uh, after Make-A-Wish, the week after. I'm signed up for a ride in Colorado, which involves a lot of physics. Ooh. Um, and it, I may or may not be going, but I think I'll go. Does it involve mountains? A lot of mountains. Ah. Um, but what I'm, I'm really getting interested in now is more bicycle touring. I took a fun little trip this uh, in May, a three-day trip from here to Chicago with two girlfriends. We carried our own stuff. We had a great time. <laughs> and then uh, my husband and I just came back from a trip with two other couples where um, we didn't have the use of a vehicle for five days. We did have somebody tran uh move our luggage from place to place, but I really like that and I'm starting to think about maybe something like a little bit more adventurous like that going away and, and we did our stuff. And, and we did our gap tips. We did yeah. our we did those we did two trips on um, trail trail rides, rail oh, trails. Right, rail trails. And yeah. a group of us those are for good. two years in a row, we just took our bikes, um, we were transported to a starting point, we had packs on our bike 
and then rode back several, like 200, it was about 200, 250 mm -hmm. miles mm -hmm. over a period of four days at wow. that point in time. Wow. And I, I always said that it was one of the most freeing things I ever did because you realize how little you really need in life. If you have your bicycle and two little packs with a change of clothes and a nice bed to sleep in at night, that's all you really need. <laughs> and a shower. And those are the two, I believe those are the two or two of the longest rail trails in the country. Oh, right. Wow. And we did it's that very um, accessible to anybody who's interested. You could do it in fewer days. You can do it in more days. Wow. But um, one is the uh, Great Allegheny Passage Rail Trail, which goes from Pittsburgh to Cumberland, Maryland. Whoa. And another one is the Katie, Katie trail. trail, which is from Charles, Charles. Yeah. Just Charles. What's the name of that state? Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. St. Charles, Missouri. St. Charles. Right. To some other place. Anyway, it was very nice. I'll tell you, these gals really know what this is all about. It's very But I wanted fun. to end this by saying to you, do you have any funny stories that you want to uh, tell us or anything you want to share in the way of uh, unusual humor or are we going to let Einstein have the last word? Well, you know. <laughs> I think it's going to be Einstein. I, I would have prepared something had I known I could uh, challenge Einstein. Uh, <laughs> yes, well, let's see if we can let Einstein do this. Uh, there he is right now. And what he says about this <laughs> is, he says, bicycling is great as long as you keep moving. And I think that's what these gals have done over the years is they have moved, and they moved a bunch of us very, very well. And so it's been really nice, and I've appreciated it a lot. And I want to thank you for being on the program. I you think are it's most terrific. Welcome. Thank you so much. You're sure, welcome. appreciated this. So, <laughs> and thank you, viewers, for watching and putting up with us. And this has been the Art of Physics. And until next time, I'm Art Wiggins. <laughs>